My name is Tunele Bede. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Lagos, Department of Employment Relations and Human Resource Management. Today we'll be uh, looking at the supply for labor. Now, let us define the supply for labor. The labor supply is defined as the total number of hours which an individual would make himself or herself available for work. Why is our non-working hours are jointly considered as leisure? That definition was given by Fajano in 2002. And another definition of labor supply is the hours of work which a worker intend and will offer for work at a given period at the price consideration at the expense of leisure hour. That definition was given by my humble self, Elegbele, in 2025. So what the two definitions is trying to tell us in essence is that people offer hours of work based on certain consideration. What are those considerations? Many. What is second consideration? Leisure hour. If I work, I will earn money. If I don't work, I will enjoy leisure but forgone wages. So those are the two things the two definitions try to explain to us. So by working, people have access to money. And they are, can be able to meet up with their cost of living expenses. By not working, they will enjoy leisure, but they have to sacrifice the salary to be earned. For us to be able to analyze a unit properly, we need to uh, look at the neoclassical assumptions of labor supply. And what are these assumptions? The first one is that labor unit for which supply is being analyzed are homogeneous in all respect. Of course, we have to go by that assumption, otherwise we may not be able to analyze labor units uh, accurately. This is a economic assumption. It may be contrary to the perspective of uh, behavioral scientists that believe that it is not only money that motivates people to work, and that uh, people differ greatly. Of course, people differ greatly in the organization because the role of accountant differs from that of role of a lawyer, the role of a lawyer differs from that of a HR personnel. But however, if we decide to analyze them individually, we may not be able to complete analysis of a state outlet of a country. But however, we are going to assume that labor units in Nigeria are homogeneous. So when we want to compare labor units in Nigeria to that of the United States of America or Britain, we can know that we are we, we are talking about a certain characteristics that bind all labor units in Nigeria together, and that is the concept of homogeneity of labor. The second one is that people are currently working the preferred number of hours because of wage rate. Like I said earlier, people are working because of money. Maybe contrary to behavioral scientists, that people are not only working because of uh, money. Then two, people are not coerced to offer hours of work against their wages. People are not quest to offer hours of work against their wish. So you can alternate hours of work from zero to 24 hours. Then the cost of leisure to a worker is a foregone wages, as we said earlier. Now, when we put all these assumptions together, we can be able to uh, we can be able to define the map of indifferent curve and the budget line for labor in order to determine the total number of hours supplied by an individual, and that will enable us to derive our supply curve. And the indifferent curve is defined as the various combination between hours supply and leisure hours that yielded the same level of satisfaction or utility to a worker. For example, the figure 3.1 here demonstrated uh, a map of indifferent curve. On the y axis, you have the wage rate, and on the x axis, you have the uh, you have the hour supply for work. Now I'm talking about the vertical line represent wage rate, and the horizontal line represented the hour supply for work. Now, like like we said earlier, that people will tend to supply more hours of work in order to earn more wages. At y two, this person su supply uh, OL1 and OL2 hours of work. OL2 hours of work. But however, when the wage rate increases, this individual tends to enjoy leisure more than income. Therefore, it reduces our supply from OL2 
to OL1 because the wage rate has increases. And at U2, that is the satisfaction is derived by supplying more hours of work in order to earn wages. And at U1, that is the satisfaction is derived by reducing hours of work, forgoing some wages, and enjoy more leisure hours. The budget line for labor. The budget line for labor uh, represented uh, two ex extreme possible points on the uh, wage rate and hour supply map. Two possible extreme. That is, if you supply OM hours of work as depicted on the diagram, you are going to earn OY wages. If you supply OM hours of work, you are going to earn OY wages. That is, if you work for 24 hours, you work more hours, you will tend to uh, earn more wages. But however, if you now value leisure, then you now supply OL1 wages. There's no way, uh, you now supply OL1 hours of work. There's no way we earn OY wages. What you are going to earn is well, OY1 wages because you have reduced our supply for work, you now have value leisure more than income. When you put the supply and the, uh, the budget line for labor and the map of indifference curve together, we'll be able to derive our supply curve or supply function. Ordinarily, the supply curve is a monotonically increasing function of the wage rate. The higher the wage rate, the more hours that is being supplied. So that, and that is depicted at wage rate one the worker supply l1 as wage rate two is supply l2 as wage rate three supply l3 and that is why uh the supply curve increasingly a monotonically function of the wage rate but however at some point in time individual may value leisure more than income and at that point in time we may experience backward sloping supply curve as depicted here at w1 at wage rate one the individual supply l1 hours of work when the wage rate increases to w2 he also supply l2 hours of work more hours of work was supplied as a result of increase in wage rate but however when the wage rate now increased to position to point W3. At that point in time, the individual value leisure more than income. So instead of supplying more additional worker to point L3 after the L2, it reduced our supply to a position behind L2 hour supply for work. And that is what accounts for the backward sloping supply curve. The explanation for the backward sloping supply curve is offered in two effects that is, income effect and substitution effect. That will be explained in our next class.